Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Hold My Crown podcast. I am so grateful that you are here hanging out with me and my handy dandy co-host who is not physically here in the moment. He is getting our children set up for a picnic on our bed watching Miss Rachel because we're just trying to roll with the punches to make these podcasts happen. We want to get them up every single week for you guys. We did skip one week. I don't know if you noticed. Um, I had some family emergency things going on. Everybody is healthy. We are all good. We are back. And today we are talking about the Valley. It's Bravo's newest reality show. Daniel and I are on the show. And um, y'all, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. I am very excited for it to come out. I am very excited to see how every single episode turns out because all we know are the moments that we filmed with each other, me and Daniel, and then the moments that we filmed in the big group settings. But we don't know what was going on behind the scenes with everybody else when they were filming. So it's going to be really interesting to kind of watch and get to know this show with you, with the audience. It airs, or it already aired, the first episode already aired yesterday, Tuesday. By the time you're hearing this, it'll be Wednesday. So I'm excited to talk all about the first episode and the premiere. Y'all, there was drama at the premiere (laughs) and there was drama at the premiere. And I was sitting there rolling my eyes like, oh my gosh, we need the cameras here now. Like I'll have to tell, we'll tell you when Daniel comes and sits with me once all the kids are set up and everything. But there was drama at the premiere. I'm like, we can't even just hold it off for the cameras. It's going to happen whether the cameras are there or not. Um, And that just goes to show because we did have a lot of fun at the premiere, it goes to show that we are all real friends in real life, but these are some dramatic people. (laughs) And they are people that are good for camera. They are people that just naturally have drama in their life. But I don't have drama in my life. So why did I sign up for a reality show? I don't know. Um, I know why. I signed up because I wanted to spend time with my friends, do a fun project together over the summer. Like that's why I signed up. And I'm, I love Brittany so much. And she was so encouraging and positive. Like, come on, we'll hang out. It'll be a great time. And it was but I truly was not prepared for all the drama. So we'll talk about a little bit of the drama that happens in episode one. You guys hopefully have already seen it. If not, go watch episode one. It's on Peacock today. It was on Bravo last night. And um, and I'll kind of break it down a little bit for you and then share with you what happened at the premiere because you guys, I can't believe it. I mean, I really feel like we just need cameras on us 24-7 because this group of friends is so close But goodness gracious, they're like, you know, I I do the beauty queen world. There's some drama queens up in this cast, this group of friends. So I'm very excited for you guys to watch the whole season. Like it's going to be so much fun to be able to have these conversations on the podcast, give you guys a little like behind the scenes, deeper understanding of what's going on and, um, and just like discuss. Like we'll break down and discuss the episode with you right here on the Hold My Crown podcast. So until Daniel gets here, which will be right after the break, have a cup of tea, have a morning coffee if you're listening in the morning. As I say in the intro, throw your hair in a messy bun and just get comfortable, hang out. We're going to be like you and me and Daniel just chatting and telling you all about the real real of what was going on when we filmed and what happened literally a few days ago at the premiere party. So quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back from the break, guys. I have my handy dandy hubby. 
Daniel Let's Bucko. See. Handy dandy hubby. Yeah. All right. But are you handy in the house? Oh, boy. Do you fix things? <laughs> no, I don't. No. Not much of a manual labor guy. There was actually on one of the um, episodes or one of the previews of the show, uh-huh. they showed you and three other men trying to be yes. handy. I can't wait for that episode to come out because I heard it was hilarious. I left. Daniel was trying to fix something for me. Listen, in my defense, it was a massive Kia uh, furniture piece. Ikea. Ikea. Not a car. <laughs> <laughs> I, you'll find out about that too uh, but it was just a million gajillion pieces yes. and you know three guys struggled yes you but you are handy dandy sometimes so I appreciate sometimes, that sometimes alright let's talk about the premiere and then oh boy which was just a few days ago it was or like late last week we had the premiere party and then we will talk about the episode and then we'll answer our audience questions okay, all right okay? all right so let's start talking about the premiere before we even left to the premiere there was drama you oh guys before we left the house what happened baby <laughs> tell me what happened you didn't know what you're gonna wear well there's that yes uh-huh. and up until the last second which is usually the case anyway uh, you don't know what you're going to wear. Well, my sweet stylist, who I love, and I will not say his name because I don't want to call him out, but he uh, got sick he back, or he backed out on you. Something happened. So I backed was, out on thank you. the Lord, I placed a revolve order and then I went to some showrooms because it was the day before that I was trying to pull stuff. Yes. And everything in a showroom is a size four, and I'm not a size four, and it was really so. Anywho, yeah, we had picked Mom the dress. Struggles. We picked the dress. Yes. It was a great dress. It was a great dress. Yes. Um, until you get the dreaded word, honey. Can you come zip me up? <laughs> <laughs> and I just know that this could go wrong in so many ways. I'm not going to blame it on my actual size. I'm going to blame it on my the size of my boobs. Because 100%. he was trying to zip it up, and once you hit that like middle spot in the that back, middle spot <laughs> where there's a seam and it's like, SOB, and the boobs are there. I mean, yeah. you can be a 400 pound bodybuilder uh-huh. trying to get that thing to go up, yeah. And you, it's just a Jimmy thing. But then a, a girl will come over and they'll get it done in two seconds. Two seconds. That's just what girls know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But um, I got to that part. And I think I had just got it up, and then the whole bottom zipper went. <laughs> And, uh, mm-hmm. My zipper broke. Crack kills. <laughs> All the way down to the crack. All the way down to the crack. And I was stuck in my dress. You were stuck. I couldn't get out, and I had to breastfeed the babies. So I'm like trying to pull pull it down enough to feed the babies and then trying to pull it back up because I still wanted wild. pictures in the dress. Exactly, exactly. So I said, this is a hot dress. We're getting some photos before we, we leave. We did. Yeah. So we Just did a little, back. a little mini photo shoot. And I did actually try to turn to the side. And he was like, you can see all the way down to your booty. Yes. Turn back around to the front. Yes. So, um, and then I, I really thought we were going to have to cut me out of it. But it was a two-person job to try to shimmy it down over my hips with the zipper still stuck in yeah. the middle. Um, I went in the Uber with a skirt on and a top that I was okay with, but I didn't love. Right. And then my manager ran to a showroom, grabbed a top that actually went with the skirt that I was wearing that matched it. She was, she saved the day. And then she met us at a restaurant down the street. I changed in the bathroom, in the restaurant that said, okay, I think it works. And then we... Jumped in an Uber, drove one block in the Uber. (laughs) I just didn't want to like show up and change at the premiere party, like, you know, the red carpet thing. So we met at a restaurant down the street and then we all got out of the Uber and. And it was crazy. And did the premiere. Paparazzi all outside the thing. Mm -hmm. Went in, did interviews with. And we had a plan. Before that, we had a plan of getting out of the car. I was like, okay, I'll be on the side of the door, on the door where. We pull up to the curb. Daniel will get out at the other side, run around, open the door for me. Like, if there is paparazzi, it'll be a cute shot of him, like, holding my hand, helping me out of the car. But there was a really polite, like, wonderful man that opened the door for me. So I'm just standing there like, uh, I'm not ready. I was like, just (laughs) go. Paparazzi. Just uh, go. uh, Just go. Yeah, so we just made it work. Uh, But, yes, there was huge... Media outlets, Media, Entertainment press. Tonight, um, Rolling Stones, yeah. like everybody and Deadline, anybody. Deadline, Us Weekly, yes. News, everybody. Was all there. of it. Everybody was there. It was yeah. so much fun. We did all of our interviews. Mm-hmm. We had, um, you know, other cast members there before we arrived. 
I feel like I'm going to spoil something, but it already happened. So you guys know if you've looked like in the media. But before we arrived, I was texting with the girls and we were seeing like who's arriving when. We want to try to all arrive close to the same time. And we found out that two of the girls were not going to be arriving with their husbands. (gasps) Yeah. Not only that, the they were drama. Gonna be arriving together without their husbands, and their husbands were going to be arriving, arriving together. together. <laughs> yeah, so the husbands were arriving earlier, and the girls were arriving oh, fifteen minutes later because they didn't just want to crazy. be. Yeah, they didn't want to be on the red carpet with their husbands. Yeah. So you guys will have to watch the whole season to see why. I think yes. some of it will play out, especially for one of the couples, and then another couple you'll see little moments. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was. I was like, what? You're not even going to like pull it together for the red carpet. Yeah. Ooh. So. But then it was a lot of fun. Yeah. We played we the fun. episode. We did the cast picture. We had tried a bit of, to get a cast picture. A little picture. bit of drama with that. A little bit? <laughs> a lot of I thought of there drama. was going to be a fight on the red carpet, you guys. So I don't know if any media got video or behind the scenes oh of this. I feel gosh. like it would have been posted if the behind the scenes yeah. already happened. But Okay. I'm just I'm just have to break it down. So this is no. what it was. Why? You can't. Why? I'm not sharing any like it was all the media was there when it happened. Uh, yes. We were trying to get his, a cast photo. Yes. And Daniel and I were standing kind of close to the middle. Like every, you know, all the couples were together for the most part. And you really don't want me to say this? I think you just need to say it, keep it surface. Of course. Right. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Some people wanted different spots than other people. Oh, that's all you want me to say? Yeah. Okay. So we won't say who almost got into exactly a little. We'll say a verbal confrontation. We'll say that. Oh, of course, it was just verbal. Of course. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was like so tense. You could feel the energy. <laughs> we were like, "What is happening? Why are they? Why is so and so not moving? And why won't they like?" And then the person. It was a whole situation. And then Daniel and I ended up being the head like, "PR." She was like giving me just like puppy eyes. Us? She was like, "I know you guys will." Like, please. And we were like, sure, of course. Of course. <laughs> so what, we switched spots with somebody else. Yeah. But like, it was getting so heated and so intense. And you guys know, not you guys, you, you who's listening, you know, I'm sure you've been in a situation where it's just like so <laughs> uncomfortable and everybody's blood is a little bit racing awkward. and it's awkward and you just... You just want everybody to just take a deep breath and take the dang photo. Yeah. That's what was happening. Thank goodness the photo happened. Yes. Um, and the reason I say thank goodness the photo happened is because there's been other times where we've tried to get a cast photo and people have refused because of a previous conflict or something that had happened a week or two before. And they're like, I don't want to be in a photo with that person. And it's like, come on, guys. We're all grown ups. Put yeah. your big girl panties on or big boy panties on. Panties <laughs> for boys. <laughs> Put them on Some. and take... The dang picture for two seconds, but this group of friends, it's wild. It's drama, which, which means the show will be good. Yes, yes. Um, so if you're excited. listening, hopefully you heard about or not heard about. Hopefully you watched the first episode because this is coming out uh, on right. Wednesday. That's the first right. episode aired last night, Tuesday. Yeah. So, what did you think? This is my my um. Method for getting through being on reality TV. Mm-hmm. My method is to laugh at myself in every <laughs> single episode. And so I hope people aren't mean to me because obviously I cried. You've all seen it. If you've seen it or not, I cried. Spoiler alert. Um, and I feel like I sounded like a goober. I a did. Goober. 100%. I sounded like no. a goober. And that's okay. I was um, very postpartum. Exactly. I had just given birth five weeks before that moment. Um, and so I was hormonal. You were very hormonal. <laughs> and, and I it think was okay. It was, it was okay. okay. The thank you for giving me grace. Yes. Um, and what for me, postpartum, whether it was Asher or with the girls, when I feel any emotion, it turns into tears. So rage and anger turns into tears happiness turns into tears sadness of course tears so i my blood was boiling (laughs) spoiler alert if you don't want to know what happened at the very end of the episode skip forward just one minute like that 30 second skip forward button just skip forward one minute and we'll get right back into no more spoilers okay but my blood was boiling when Jax pulled daniel's pants down and we actually have a really funny moment daniel watched it back and he 
like paused it. And it's just, you, maybe we shouldn't have said that. It's fine. You pulled um, my pants. It's a pantsing. It's a pantsing. Okay. But what guys do to the where, each other. Where Jax's head was, was like right but in yes, your butt crack. Jax definitely got his <laughs> nose all up in there. It like actually like collision <laughs> happened with Jax's face and Daniel's butt. Poor guy. Next time, don't pull Daniel's pants down. Exactly. <laughs> but my blood was boiling. But I, I was, was wearing a long tank top. And so nothing Thank goodness. Was, because you know. obviously you guys heard what I said. I was cussing. I don't normally swear. I was, I like almost <laughs> never hormonal. swear. I was hormonal. But yeah. what I want to explain, which I think any postpartum mom would understand this, I was mad and like my blood was boiling, but everything just turned into tears. So I was like, right. so like, I can't believe someone just did this to my husband. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> and then, but I just feel like I look like a goober with everything I said and oh my how I was crying so hard. And then Sheena's smile. <laughs> Sheena's She's smile. Like, they welcome cut to, to her. Reality TV. Oh, welcome to reality TV. <laughs> welcome to this friend group. Exactly. You know, this friend group is so. The boys are sometimes like teenage boys, and just and like, it was also Brock, right? Her husband, and so she told, knew like Brock Jax to do it, egging Jax on exactly. Um, and then I was just like, you could see me. I asked you question but i won't say it because now people have skipped forward and i don't want to spoil anything else but i asked you a question and i was thinking like how are you not livid right now but you were laughing which is probably what i would have done if i was not hormonal i probably would have <laughs> laughed and not s- cursed on national television oh and gosh. used words that i don't normally use or cried but it is what it is and my method for getting through this whole season is just to laugh at myself. So if there's anything yeah, where you're like, Nia, you look so dumb. Or like, Nia, why were you acting that way? Like, if you guys think that, just laugh with me, okay? <laughs> just, you can laugh. It's okay. I'm laughing. Hey, you laugh. We all laugh. Hate. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do some questions. Because I feel like that's the main thing that I wanted to talk about with episode one. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait to talk about all the other episodes with you guys, but I want to talk about it's that It's a one. roller coaster. Buckle up. Buckle up. All right. Uh, this is a question for Nia. How has your experience in the pageant world prepared for your role in reality television? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Also, thank you, Juliana, our <laughs> producer. <laughs> Amazing producer. Uh, we love her. So, good question. The... I think, you know, God is good, it, even in <laughs> you're in a reality TV world, because I feel like little things that I've done have prepared me for each step or phase of my life. Mm-hmm. So I worked at Disneyland as, quote unquote, friends with the princesses. And I feel like that prepared me a bit for being Miss USA, because I learned how to have a line of people that want to take a photo with you right. and how to make everybody feel seen and loved and welcome, because that's your job as a princess and that's your job as a title holder. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, It also taught me how to get away from people politely. (laughs) And so being a princess prepared me for being Miss USA. Being Miss USA prepared me for the scrutiny, the criticism, the Mm. haters, the Mm. trolls. Um, And I don't, I don't know if I'm, will fully understand what we're about to get into right. until like today, the day after the episode airs. Right. Um, but I did get a lot of hate off and on throughout my years, Miss USA. And one thing that really helped me was learning and knowing that like a new cycle is a few weeks. So people will be mad. They'll express their fears, their angers. They'll put all of their feelings on you because you're in the public eye. But it's not going to last forever. So if it sucks, like it really sucks for sure in the moment, but I can get through it and I can survive. And I think something else I learned as Miss USA is to like keep people that ground you really close to you. So I know who Mm -hmm. my friends are. And even like the other girls that we filmed the show with, like we're all really close. I think we'll be doing even more girls nights as the show airs and all of that. Just like keeping your close group of friends close. Yeah. Um, did being an actor prepare you for the reality TV world? Because it's so different than the acting world. The acting world, you're you're portraying someone else. Yeah. And it's almost, I feel like there's a little bit of anonymity. Like you get to be someone else, but then you get to go back to your real life. Whereas like you're sharing your real life in the reality TV world. So do you feel like acting has prepared you in any way? Yeah, I definitely <clears throat> having cameras around, mm-hmm. you know, being comfortable around cameras. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, no. 
<laughs> so you're saying you're you not ready. Got your, you got your lines memorized. You've yeah. done the, the 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 work. You've studied the craft for so long. Yeah. You know how the scenes are going to play out, and uh, you know even acting with improv, you know there's still you know rules of improv. Yeah. With reality, it's just. Uh, Whatever goes, goes. Real life. You don't know what someone's going to throw at you. Exactly. And you just got to catch it. And there ain't no trailer to go back to. Yeah. (laughs) You don't get to decompress. You're stuck in the real life moment and you can't get away. We have a guest. (laughs) Hey, cutie pie. Oh, my goodness. Okay. We're going on a bake. Okay. All right. All right. We'll be right back, guys. All right, welcome back, you guys. Great Whoa. little break. Now we're back. Okay, we're back. Um, Daniel, did anybody disagree with us joining a reality show before we did it? Were they like, <laughs> no? Tell me. I want to hear your answer, and I have an answer too. I mean, we were definitely on the fence, back and forth, back yeah. and forth. Um, and then some people were very excited about it. Who? Your friends. Yeah. And. Uh, then other people were just cautious. Who? Family. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, my parents. Yeah. Um, everybody else in my family, especially my sister, she was like, you have to do it. Oh, if you don't do this, all Daniel, the sisters. if you don't do this, this is the biggest mistake of your entire life. Shout I'm out like, to Hannah. <laughs> guys, I don't know, man. You guys don't know what, what, what this entails. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'll go with that. But okay. even you and I, we were... Definitely, but you know, back and forth and and on the fence about it. We were back and forth the entire time, just because it was something we've never done before. So we didn't know, like, is this going to be good? Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be great for us, like long term, big picture, like you know, work wise, even outside of the reality right. world? Um, and then for me, if you were to ask me that question, um, my therapist, my like our therapist, our therapist that we I both was, have. I was gonna say that, yeah, because we both have like we used to do individual sessions with him and together sessions with him, and so we both had an individual session with him, right. and the conversation, at least when I spoke with him, was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. is is this really a good idea for you? Right? Um, and then like uh, even other random people that I spoke to were like. You don't seem like the dramatic type of person. Like, why are you doing... Just curious. Like, why are you doing a reality show? You don't seem dramatic. Right. Um, And I'm not. And I don't like drama. But you'll see. Maybe I'll get into (laughs) drama. Maybe I'll get into drama this season. Well, the first episode... I mean, a little dramatic. Maybe I will get into drama <laughs> or maybe drama will be brought into my life. Exactly. Which will it be? Yeah. Yeah. Probably the latter, but yes, yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So it was definitely some family being hesitant, your yeah. sister being super supportive oh and excited, my gosh. and our friends that have done reality shows before, like they were excited yeah. for us yeah. for sure. Yeah. Outside They're of like, this go group for of friends. it. You know, it's why not kind yeah. of thing. Okay, next question. Okay, how do you handle criticism and negativity both as a former pageant queen or actor and a reality TV person? Like, do you have a a technique, a method that you do? And I think because, you know, this, yes, this episode today is about episode one and the premiere party and all of that. But I want, no matter when you're listening, I want you to feel like you get a takeaway. So in life in general, but Mm -hmm. also specifically for us in this reality TV situation, how can people deal with criticism or hate like everybody no matter where they're at i feel like right. very likely will deal with something at some point especially on social media in the workplace that kind of thing so what is your technique for dealing with criticism trolls mean people haters <laughs> haters gonna hate how do you deal well, with them? i know you you just block 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 ain't block. got no time for that i feel like people are gonna be making shirts instead of block by jacks it's gonna be like block, block by, by mia, mia. Yeah. because jacks blocks people like ain't nobody's business right me too. People used to ask me a few years after pageants, like, how do you like, you know, deal with all the haters? I'm like, oh, I don't have any. Because <laughs> they're all blocked. So I will probably be, I already have tried to like control myself from blocking people already. Yeah. It was people that were mean to my friends. I was in a group like post where we were all collaborators. Yeah. And I was the one that posted it. So I have the power to delete comments and block people. And I was <laughs> about to go crazy but i'm like let me just wait until the first episode and then i'll start blocking people so 
be nice, guys, because we don't have time for that in my little bubble yeah. of the world. Yeah. How do you deal with it? You know, it's it's a mindset. Or people say you got to have thick skin, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, in this business. I don't feel like I have really thick skin. No. <laughs> what were business. you thinking signing but up for no a reality kidding. show? Well, you know, as an actor, I... I I usually get a lot of praise for my performance. <laughs> I haven't had much, uh, you know, bad stuff, haters. As an actor, know, everyone he, is stroking your ego he, on here set. Here and there. Um, yeah, but even, you know, as fans and, or yeah. people that have watched the movie, you know, I haven't like, oh, had I like really you, bad you. criticism, you know. Yeah. So now that I am stepping into this and being very vulnerable yep. and showing, you know, All of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting. I just feel like I need to know my routines in the morning, know who I am, who created me. Yes. Uh, that um, decisions or You are mistakes. a child of God. Yes. Don't and define you me. you are human. They, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Boom. Boom. I think that's great. Yeah. So takeaways are block the haters, number one, and have a great morning routine where you're intentional with your headspace. Yes. Know who you are and whose you are. Know that yes. decisions or moments in life that maybe were not your best moments, they don't define you or your character as a person. 100%. And we can choose to be better every single day. Yes. And surround Boom. yourself around people that are only going to lift you up, build you up, and not tear you down. Have that close-knit group of people. Yes. And especially my beautiful wife. <laughs> My biggest fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> always. Likewise. Always. Always. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like those are really good takeaways for today's episode and yeah. how we are hoping to deal with criticism. But Daniel, I got to call you out real quick. I think you scroll the comments way too much. <laughs> And it's not even about us. It's just about the show in general. People saying if they're excited or like they're they don't want the show or they do want I the do. show. I and do. Daniel just scrolls. Oh, people are saying this. People are saying that. People. I'm like, you got to stop now. Get into the habit of not I scrolling know. now because it's gonna start like, real Jax quick today. He, it's Jax gonna doesn't start. even watch any of the episodes. He really? doesn't even watch them, and he doesn't even look at any comments on Instagram. Wow. He like just keeps it. He's like doing my That's job. That's how you survive. Boom, you know. I know. I know. You got to be more disciplined, boo. I do. I do. But then I like, you know, when I get a lot of positive feedback but and it the, strokes my okay, ego a the, little bit. The unfortunate things, <laughs> and I'm sure I get tons Just of positive kidding. feedback, but the unfortunate things for me. Um, Wrap it up. But like with children or like relationships, it's for every one negative, you need to say seven positive. Yeah, So that's the, good. the negative comments weigh heavier, unfortunately. Oh, for sure. You can get a hundred positive and two mean and you're like, oh, dang. Yeah. And those heavier ones sit with you. So yeah. um, one more moral of the story as we're wrapping up today's episode is let's be nice online. Like mm-hmm. let's be nice to people. And even be outside kind. of outside of just being nice, maybe my encouragement for today is go out of your way to do something kind, positive, loving, sweet like to someone else whether it's online or through a text message or phone call or in person i was pushing the stroller i wanted to get out and go to starbucks early in the morning the other day Mm because i we didn't have any coffee creamer i'm like get me out of this house so (laughs) (laughs) i put all of the kids in the stroller i had both the girls in the seats and asha was on the little scooter thing and i was pushing all the kids and someone out of nowhere a woman was just like you're an incredible mother you're doing so good so like Mm -hmm. those moments do that for other people whether it's mom or just someone you see doing a great job, being wonderful. Let's just let's end today's episode with kindness and encouraging yes. everyone to be kind to others out there. Build okay. up, don't tear down. Build up, don't tear down. Yeah. I'm going to excuse Daniel. You are excused from the podcast. Well, because I hear babies screaming. Because you hear babies and screaming. This is my job. I got to go breastfeed now. <laughs> it's the story of my life every two hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, thank you guys so much as we're kind of wrapping up today's episode for hanging out. I am so interested in knowing your comments, questions, thoughts about the episode. So today I'm going to post to Instagram and it's going onto the Hold My Crown podcast Instagram account. And I want you to drop your comments and your questions there because next week's episode, I'll make sure to pull from there. And so you have some time whenever you listen to this, if it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever day, drop your comments on the Instagram account so I can pull those comments and questions and talk about them. One shout out as we're wrapping up because why not do some shout outs? Um, I want to do another shout out from someone that has left a comment on the podcast. And 
I want you guys, if you want, to go to the podcast, drop a comment. That's what it's called, right? A, rev- a review. That's the word. A review and rate us. Okay. I'm going to do one from February 9th. It says, it's from Emily F. 991. Such a fun podcast. Nia and Daniel have a great dynamic and clearly adore each other. I'm enjoying learning about them and topics I'm not too knowledgeable about. Looking forward to watching The Valley when it comes out. Perfect review to leave and then to read today as The Valley just came out. So thank you so much, Emily, for your review. If you guys are listening, please give us five stars, drop a review. I appreciate it. It means the world to me and to Daniel. If you are listening, please share with someone you love, share this episode or any of our other episodes. Make sure to follow this podcast. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all the things. And I will see you guys next Wednesday right here on the Hold My Crown podcast. Have a great day. Bye. Yay Networks.